in the male reproductive system, the brain secretes hormones that control the testes. And in particular, uh, the region of the brain is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus secretes one hormone that circulates to the anterior pituitary, causes the anterior pituitary to secrete two hormones, and those two hormones are going to target the testes. This is known as the brain testicular axis. Let me show you a little more. More specifically, the hypothalamus releases a hormone. That hormone is gonadotropin releasing hormone, or GnRH. GnRH targets the anterior pituitary, so it circulates to a nearby area, causing the anterior pituitary to release two hormones, luteinizing hormone, or LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. Both of these hormones circulate to the testes and control secretion from the testes. If we take a close look at the structure of the testes, there are two major structural components of the testes. There are the interstitial cells. Those are the cells that are stained red here. They fill the gaps in between the seminiferous tubules. The interstitial cells produce testosterone. And then there are the seminiferous tubules. And the seminiferous tubules are the site of sperm production. Luteinizing hormone, LH, stimulates the interstitial cells and FSH stimulates the seminiferous tubules. So luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary is going to stimulate the interstitial cells in the testes to produce testosterone. And testosterone is going to drive spermatogenesis, and it's also going to maintain secondary sex characteristics like increased hair growth, muscle growth, um, bone density, etc. Follicle-stimulating hormone that's coming from the anterior pituitary is going to stimulate the sustentacular cells. Those are the structural cells that are found within the seminiferous tubules, the ones that don't turn into sperm cells. Uh, it's going to stimulate the sustentacular cells to release a hormone called androgen-binding protein. And the effects of androgen-binding protein are to enhance the ability of the spermatogenic cells to bind to testosterone. So in other words, androgen binding protein is going to allow all of the cells that are undergoing meiosis to bind more readily to testosterone, and that's going to drive spermatogenesis. Okay, so let's recap this and talk a little bit more about the regulation of these hormones. We know that the hypothalamus releases GnRH starting at puberty. That's going to stimulate the anterior pituitary to release two hormones, LH and FSH. LH is going to have its effect at the level of the interstitial cells in the testes, causing testosterone production, whereas follicle-stimulating hormone is going to uh, stimulate the sustentacular cells, part of the seminiferous tubule, to release a hormone called androgen-binding protein, and that's going to help drive spermatogenesis. So there are actually three hormones that are secreted by the testes. We've talked about two of them so far. So we've talked about testosterone coming from the interstitial cells. We talked about androgen binding protein coming from the sustentacular cells. And the third hormone that's secreted by the testes is a hormone called inhibin. And that hormone comes from the sustentacular cells. Inhibin is released by the sustentacular cells as a gauge of how many sperm are in the testes. And so if there is a high sperm count, a lot of inhibin, is released, and if there is a low sperm count, low amounts of inhibin are released. So in other words, inhibin is a gauge of the amount of sperm that's there, and it's released in direct proportional amounts to the numbers. The effect of inhibin is that inhibin inhibits follicle-stimulating hormone. So think about that. This hormone, inhibin, is going to turn off FSH. And so if we had a lot of sperm in the testes, we probably want to slow down sperm production. If we have a high sperm count, that means that there's going to be high inhibin and high inhibition of FSH, which means that the cells that are undergoing meiosis are not going to be able to bind to the testosterone that's there as well, 
and that's going to slow down sperm production compared to if we had a low sperm count. If there was a low sperm count, then we would have low amounts of inhibin. We'd have very little inhibition on FSH, which means that FSH is free to stimulate the sustentacular cells to release androgen binding protein. And that androgen binding protein is going to stimulate spermatogenesis, or in other words, sperm production will occur quicker. So this is a um, interesting little scheme where the amount of androgen binding protein and the rate of spermatogenesis is going to be regulated independent of testosterone production because we don't want testosterone levels to go up and down and waver all over the place. Once the person starts secreting testosterone, those levels are going to stay pretty steady throughout the person's life. 